start streaming. Let's see what happens here. As soon as it tells me I'm live, I'm going to start talking. Let's see what we're doing. Looks like we're live according to YouTube. So what's going on, my friends? But well, this is Chris over here at Virillo Trading. And in this video, we're going to do two things. First thing is we're going to build a couple of Sierra chart books, which means I'm going to build some charts for you guys for a couple of markets that I've been uh, researching about recently. And then uh, I'm going to do a little bit of research on some stocks and talk to you guys about some uh, stocks that I've been looking at. I'm doing some repositioning of some investment positions. So I'm just wondering what you guys think of all that. Let me know in the chat. We're doing a live stream here. This is a random live stream, very impromptu. So please let me know what you think of it down below. There's going to be a comment section, a live chat room, whatever we got going on here. I honestly forgot how all this works. Just kidding. I'm just, I'm just playing with you guys. So what I'm going to do right now before I get started with all this is I'm actually going to go over to my channel, go get the link to this stream, and I'm gonna go throw it in the Telegram chat so people on Telegram can be notified that this stream is going on. In the meantime, you can also go ahead and share this with your friends because I'm gonna be making a couple of chart books for you guys here on Sierra Chart and um, looking at the gold markets and looking at a couple of stocks that I have been researching about because I've been talking with a couple of people lately and you know, you get ideas. So I'm going to just go ahead and type on Telegram. So let's go over to the left screen here. And actually, I'm not going to do that because it has some private uh, names of obviously my private Telegram chats. So let's actually, it's fine now. I got rid of it. So let's do left screen and let's do this. Hey, guys, I'm live on YouTube. Boom. Let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? All right. So there's my empty desktop. I got to pop up here. Where's the uh, camera? There I am. Hello. All right. Do we got anybody typing? Nobody in the chat yet, unfortunately. And um, so basically, let's open up Sierra chart and see what happens. I see we got a couple of likes on the stream. Thank you for liking the stream. Write something in the chat so I know you're here, please, because or else I'm like, uh, so one, one time I actually went live for you guys. No joke. I literally went live um, on private. And I started talking to nobody for a solid 15, 20, 30 minutes. And uh, then I realized it later. Hello. Hello. I see someone over in the chat. Perfect. Okay. So let's go ahead and start off by opening up Sierra charts. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do Windows key. Now check this one out. I bet you guys have never seen this before. Watch this. Right screen. All right. Windows key. SC2. Boom. Crap, you see my Sierra chart username. I gotta freaking blur that out. Gosh darn it. <laughs> oh my goodness, freaking crap. You know that happens, I guess. Uh, I should have thought of that before. Anyhow, you guys can hack my, I don't care if you hack my Sierra chart account. I don't care if you know my name. I don't care if you hack my account. Hack it. I don't care. Go ahead and hack it. Try and hack it right now. Okay? And then come back to me and tell me you hacked it. Okay? So we're gonna make some chart books here. What up, Bill? What up? What up, Goldfingers Trade? What up, and What camera do you use? I use the Sony A7S III, my friend. All right. I like it. <laughs> I got it at the beginning of this year, to be honest with you. I dig it. I dig it, bro. It's an amazing camera. Um, wrong screen. Wrong thing. Hold on a minute. There we go. Okay, now we're in a now we're in the corner. One second, guys. I'm just getting set up still here. Clearly, I have no idea what I'm freaking doing. So we're going to the right screen with a circle. There we go. That's what we want. No, we want the left screen with a circle. And I don't know why it's on the right, on the left. So let's bring it over there. Now, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to make a couple of chart books. Let's start off by making a chart book for gold. Okay. So right here, I have a chart book for crude oil. Can you guys see my cursor on the screen? That would be good if you could see it. And actually, I do have some, I do have a software. I forgot what it's called, but it's on my system. Let's search up for cursor. No. Highlight. Nope. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. It's a software that I have that uh, highlights the cursor on the screen. I guess I should probably put it on one second. Okay. Um, again, uh, <laughs> more personal data about to be revealed. Here it is. Mouse cut shortcut highlight. There we go. Okay. Got it. Boom. Turn off desktop icons. All right. You guys see this? Perfect. We're gonna make some chart books now. What's going on, Karugo? What's going on, N? What's going on, Goldfinger? What's going on, Bill? What's going on, Ms. Shari? Hope you guys are all having a great day. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves, enjoying the rest of the um, month of August here. We're close to the end of the month of August. 
And as usual, I did a random live stream because I don't honestly, <laughs> one of the reasons why I'm doing this stream is because I didn't upload a video this week, but that's a different topic, of course. So if you guys have any questions, drop them in the chat. Let's go ahead and make a chart book right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to file. I'm doing a Sierra chart right here. If you guys don't know what Sierra chart is, it's a trading software, very solid, a very reliable and a very highly customizable trading software. And I happen to like it very much. So let's go ahead and, and make a new chart book. So I'm going to go file new chart book. All righty. And then the next thing I'm going to do is go back to this chart book here and I'm going to go to chart. I'm going to go to duplicate all the charts to the chart book. And now I'm going to drag this over here and I'm going to switch to that new chart book. Now they actually added a feature which I, you didn't have to do the first step of creating the new chart book. You could have created it automatically, but I'm going to go ahead and switch to that new chart book right now. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm duplicating all of my crude oil charts into a new chart book. Now I'm going to save this chart book. I'm going to save as file, save as. All right. I'm going to save it as GC underscore trader nine, four, six dot chart save. Boom. Now all we got to do is change our symbols to gold because we're going to be looking at the gold markets right here. I was looking at every now and then on the weekends, you know, I scout through my trading view watch list and I look at a couple different markets and this week gold was interesting. So let's take a look at gold right now. So I'm going to go up to file, find symbol, and we're going to find the gold market. Let's see. Let's see. Comex real time. GC. I don't know what the front month is, so I'm just going to assume that it's October. Let's do change chart symbol. Notice there's no September, which is interesting. It's loading continuous contract data currently. What's going on, Captain Price, my man? <laughs> It's been a while since I've uh, done a live stream, so I don't really talk with people too often. All right, so the N, someone named N said, do you by any chance trade currencies? And the answer to that is, yeah, I think I do. Yeah, everybody trades currencies, I think. I mean, you're, don't you trade currency every every friggin' day when you're, when you're like uh, giving people money and uh, making money? I mean, you're kind of trading currency. I think that anybody who's got a significant amount of capital is trading currency at any time has traded currency. So yes, I've traded currency. I don't actively day trade it. I'll be honest with you. Um, for a number of reasons. But uh, I do trade currency. Yeah, I'm getting a CPU exception from one of my custom studies. That's no good. But I'll fix that another time. So GCV is now on that screen there. And um, I think that it is currently the front month contract. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and grab that symbol right there. Right? I'm gonna grab it like that copy paste and I'm going to go to this chart right here and I'm going to put that in there as well. And the uh, chart settings windows are appearing on my other monitor. Unfortunately, guys, you're not really seeing the whole thing. Probably I should have just done this with one monitor, but I guess it's uh, not going that way. Okay, so let's see here. We have this, uh, we have a footprint here. We have a 15 minute chart and we have a daily chart. Now I'm not still sure if this is actually the front month contract for gold. So what I'm going to do real quick is find out if it is. So let's go to file, find symbol again. And I'm gonna test a couple of different ones. I'm gonna do GCQ and I'm gonna do GCZ. Let's see what happens. GCQ 23. Wait and download historical data, my friends. It's downloading. Let's make it full screen. Wow, look at that. We're downloading all kinds of data. Okay, this contract is clearly expired. So if it's not expired already, it's on the verge of expiring. So let's go ahead and uh, switch to GCZ and see what that chart looks like. See how much volume is going through there. I honestly don't know how many people are watching. It could be probably one person because <laughs> I typically do these random, random streams where nobody gets notified. Okay, so it seems that GCZ might be the front month contract, my friends. So what we're going to do here, check it out. I'm going to make this chart book have two GC contracts, not one, but two. So check this one out. We got GCV over here. Now at the bottom, we're going to put GCZ 23, GCZ 23, Comex, copy it to the clipboard, apply it, go. 
And let's apply that to the other two charts. And sorry, you guys are not seeing what I'm doing with the chart settings windows because they keep popping up on the other monitor, but here it is. There it is. So I'm grabbing the symbol, paste the new symbol in, apply it. Okay, and that's it. All right, so there is pretty much, we just built a gold chart book. Wow. We're done. Pretty much, honestly. So we have a chart book here for uh, two gold contracts. Now what we're going to do is start doing some analysis on the gold markets because um, it's interesting. So I'm going to refresh this chart. Uh, what's the button again? <laughs> insert? I thought it was insert, right? I guess it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. It just took a, it took a second to, to go there. But what I was trying to press was uh, re reload and recalculate there. Insert. Yeah, it was the right one. Where does Sierra pull live data from? Um, they have a, they have their own data provider. I don't know. I don't know what the name is. I think maybe one of them name is Nirvana TS, if I'm not mistaken. You might want to look them up. Nirvana TS. I'm still getting this thing about the uh, custom study being unstable. Um, let me see if I can determine where exactly that's coming from. It doesn't tell me what chart it's coming from, unfortunately. Um, so we are going to have to, you know what, I'll just close the crude oil chart book for now and see if it stops it, but I don't think it will. All right, so gold 15 minute, gold daily. So let's go ahead and start looking at the daily chart on gold. Let's go. You guys see everything okay? I'm going to drag myself over to that side so it doesn't uh, look as weird. We got this crazy cyberpunk type of music going on over here. Now, I don't like this chart so much the way the gold price is down there in 1905. I'm not sure that's accurate, actually. I think that's inaccurate. So I'm going to look at the GCZ because I think this is more accurate. Um, at least this looks consistent with what I was seeing uh, when I was looking at the chart the other day. So weekly chart one W enter. Now let's wait for that to load. Yeah, Z is the current one. Thanks, Captain. Appreciate it. Okay, here's the weekly chart on gold. I'm gonna I'm gonna start by marking in a couple of my levels the way I do things. Okay, and I marked in the right color as well. For weekly charts, I do purple. And up here, there is a level up here. That would be the first one. This would be the second. Okay. That seems like we're pretty much in business here. And there is one as well here. Whoops. Nah, I screwed that one up, didn't I? Okay, so here's a cool trick. If you, if you guys are using... C I don't know how many people are going to watch. I'm just going to glance. I'm just going to look at how many people are watching. Five people? Four people? 18 people? What's going on, my friends? we got 18 people watching. That's more than I thought was going to join this stream. So if you're eight, if you're one of the 18 people, smash that like button right now and ask a question in the comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say right now. Um, you know, you, you could say something positive. You could say something negative. You can tell me how bad your day is going or how good your day is going. It doesn't matter because everyone's going through something right now. All right, so it's just a matter of doing what you got to do, my friends. I'm doing some analysis in the gold market. So let's check it out. Let's go to the daily chart now because I put in my weekly levels. So now I'm ready to go to the daily chart. The first daily level that stands out to me, the first thing that stands out to me is this. The fact that we are multiple days in a row trading with lower prices. Every day closing lower than the next or with a lower trading range than the following day. And the first time that we've seen a test of the prior day's high has been, I guess it was last week or today. Could it have been today, August 21st? I guess it was today, yes. Um, so today has been the first day we have actually seen a, a test of the prior day's high, which is something we have not seen in quite a while. So that is interesting. Now, I like, I went through a phase in my trading where I, I kind of got into more advanced stuff. But then I realized that the simple stuff is actually just as important, like prior day highs and prior day lows and, and prior day view app close and prior day settlement prices. Very simple prices like this are very important. You know why they're important? Because lots and lots of traders look at them. And when lots and lots of traders are looking at them, it means that there's going to be more money behind, behind a move. Because everybody sees the same thing, everybody's trading the same thing, so that means that more people are going to get stopped out in the same direction, more people are trading in the same places, means that there's going to be more fuel behind the move. So it's like a self, it's called self-fulfilling prophecy, the reason why I believe that 
basic levels like priority high, priority low, a priority view app, a current view app day. Uh, I mean, the current price of the view app on the day, all that stuff is important. Okay. So there's that daily level. Now there's a couple other daily levels here from prior uh, weeks here. I guess you could say end of July. This would be the first one, which is interesting. And I'm also going to make a quick copy of that down to there. And then I'm going to go ahead and also draw in the absolute low here. I'm going to mark that as that. And I'm also going to draw in this low right here. Um, so as you guys can see, I have different colors for different levels. And what obviously I'm color coding things based on what they mean. They mean different things to my to my trading. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. So now let's go ahead. Now that we have our daily levels in place and our weekly levels in place, what I can see is that um, we're trading into a daily area. That's the first thing. And we have the first time we've closed or tried to close above, tried to test above um, the high of the prior day here. So we did see some bulls come in today, um, although we are currently trading below that level, um, which means that I'm not really super interested in trading this bullish just yet. Now, just note there. Now we're going to go over to the 15 minute chart. Let's go over to the 15 minute chart on gold over here. And notice how my levels got automatically copied over from the daily chart to that 15 minute chart. That's something I do in Sierra chart. It's pretty easy to do that. Okay. 15 minute time frame, my friends. Now we're going to put in some 15 minute levels for the current day and uh, current prior days uh, trading ranges. Okay. So these ones are going to be, uh, this one's going to be red. And, whoops. Copy that. This one's going to be green because this is a new demand. Um, I'm just going to copy that. This is going to be a new green right here. Current day's trading range. And up here, which is, I guess, the supply of this morning, which we have just traded into currently, there is a bit of context for you. This is now going to be a red line because we've just tested it through and held it. And now we're going down. Interesting. So the context right now is kind of mixed. But what could be interesting here is if we make our way down and we see a test and a hold of this area, which is that daily area that I just marked in. So something that I would be that would get me interested in gold on the long side would be if we test and hold these areas and start making our way back up and reclaiming this 1926 area, that would get me interested in, um, in playing the long side on gold. Now, if we manage to stay below these levels, that's pretty much, you don't really want to stay long. I wouldn't really want to stay long in that case. So that's kind of what I think of gold right now. So like I said, test these areas, come back up. Maybe we're due for a bit of a long trade. I mean, we have been trading multiple days in a row down. Maybe we're due for a bit of a retracement to, to at least these uh, back to these weekly levels. And then that would be pretty much the first target zone. And I know I'm highlighting myself over that. I'll go back to the daily chart. But if we do that, that idea for the long trade on gold, the first area I would consider getting paid in a target would be you know, right around coming close to that first weekly level, maybe let it ride to the second one or in between the two here. That would be sort of where I would consider the first target zone. So you're talking about maybe about, you know, 20, 20 points or so. So that's interesting. That's an interesting little trade idea. Now, continue with the downward pattern, continue holding below the what I call in my case, daily supply zone, the new one that was formed today. Pretty much, you don't want to. You don't really, really want to be long this. But I think that if we, there is a potential for a reversal, um, if we could see a couple of those things that I just mentioned play out. So that's something I'm going to be watching throughout the week on the gold markets. Gold, my friends. You got the gold. <laughs> All right. How long have you been profitable in trading? How long did it take you to get there? So I'm pretty. I, I honestly, I'm pretty confident in my trading. I'll be honest with you. Like this. Um, this year I've been, uh, I haven't worked on my trading that much this year, but the time that I've taken off trading has allowed me to really analyze my skills as a trader and kind of where I shine and like what I know about my, my own trading and what I don't know about other forms of trading. And that's allowed me to kind of zero in on one style of trading that I believe that, that I have edge in. Um, so I'm not make I'm not really making loads of money from trading. Like I'll be honest with you, it's far from very far from my primary source of income. You know, I'm not one of these traders that's making money from trading. You know, and, and like the, you already know this already. And in case you didn't already know this, every single trading YouTuber doesn't make money from trading. They make money from YouTube more than anything, um, and brand deals. Okay, 
Um, <laughs> I'm just spitting the facts for you, okay? But uh, I do plan to get there. You know, I do plan to um, continue working on my trading. I'm going to get back to it. Definitely, I'm getting back into it now as we're talking. Hello. Uh, but, you know, and going into the end of the year and definitely going into next year, um, it's just hard because, you know, in life you have lots of stuff to balance. So it's hard to work on everything at the same time. You know, I feel like I'm always constantly juggling multiple things and it's hard to, to, to focus on one thing, one thing being trading. Um, so it's definitely got to be in it for the long run. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident in my trading. I'm doing pretty well. I, I like where I am currently and I'm willing to, you know, I'm willing to put on risk. I'm willing to tackle the markets for what it's worth for, for my trading. Um, and it's my trading, you know, like I'm not really trying to share with anybody. I'm not really trying to tell anybody like... Um this is my style. You should try it. You should make, you should try it and you're going to make money. Like you guys, you guys know, you guys know who watch my channel. You know that I don't uh, post that kind of content with these clickbait thumbnails that say I made a thousand dollars. I made $2,000. I lost a thousand dollars. Then I made it back. And it's just a whole roller coaster. It plays into the emotional impact of uh, obviously YouTube clickbait and all that stuff. If you guys want to get into that, I can get into that. It's kind of interesting. I think that, uh, you know, YouTube is a game in itself apart from trading, um, which is a very interesting game. It's a very interesting psychological game um and as you know as we've seen a development in social media as as we've seen social media continue to develop itself it's uh, it's really it's it's kind of crazy and obviously from the perspective of a content creator it's kind of crazy i think youtube and social media is just absolutely insane what, what it's come to currently um that being said i watch it every day so <laughs> what can i say um do you use bookmap i do not use bookmap mr paul thank you paul for your question i appreciate that um Captain says he uses book maps here has a heat map. Yeah, that's cool. Heat maps are cool. Uh, what's up, Druid? Druid trading. How many uh, CFD stocks can be traded in IBKR? I want to trade with around 15K. CFDs are not part of PDT rules. I'm outside the US. Um, I don't know, sir. I've never traded CFDs because um, here in North America, I'm in, the, you know, I'm in the land of the igloos, Canada. And um, we don't trade CFDs here. We trade stocks. You know, I don't. I don't really hear of anybody in Canada trading CFDs. Um, for as far as I know, CFDs are like um, a derivative of a stock or a derivative of an asset. Um, and I guess whoever's the broker of that CFD, whoever's like uh, whoever creates that particular CFD, essentially, kind of, I guess, would have the the ability to, to, to make their own bid and offer spread because it's not the actual underlying market. It's a derivative of the underlying market. So I guess it'd be controlled by whoever's, whoever's maintaining that CFD. At least that's what I think, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong. So gold's pulling back here, 1922.5. And what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, make another chart book. So we're going to go over to a screen on the right side. The right side screen, there's no right or wrong, but the right side screen is where we're about to go. So right side... Circle cam, and you see this little mouse highlight. I'm gonna minimize that. Okay, so now I'm gonna do something cool. Windows key, SC1, enter. Open Sierra chart, and again, you see my username. <laughs> Freaking shit, man. Fuck, I gotta fucking blur that shit out now, man, because now I'm gonna fucking see my username. Anyways, sorry for swearing so much, but that's, uh, that's annoying, because now I have to make the stream not private. Anyways, I don't care. Go hack my Sierra chart. Hack it right now, please. If you guys know who I'm quoting when I when I talk that way, that would be funny if you knew. There's a specific YouTuber that I've been watching um, in the last, I don't know, four months, three months, maybe, maybe two months, okay? And uh, he talks kind of like that. And I'll give you a hint. It's a channel that talks about, like, uh, hacking and Linux, that kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and make this chart book into a gold chart book. So I'm going to go do the same thing. I'm going to do file. Actually, I'm going to do chart, duplicate, chart to chart book. Now, actually, I'm going to do duplicate all charts to chart book. Check this one out. I'm going to switch to the chart book. Then I'm going to create a new chart book. I'm going to click OK. All right. Looks like we're ready. Now we need to go ahead and change the symbols on this chart book. Now I have to do them one at a time. Unfortunately, you can't do them. There's no magic trick that says, hey, switch it to gold right now. Okay, I'll come back to you. I'll edit it out and I'll see. All right. So we're looking at GCZ23 underscore fut underscore CME. Copy, apply. All right. Let's do it on this chart too. And you know, why not just put the micro in there as well? MGC, because I like to trade the micros. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm not going to trade $10 a tick. You guys think you're out of my freaking mind, don't you? All right. I'm, not, I'm going to figure out which one I put where. Um, but um, hold on a minute here. Okay. And I'll fix the, there's something wrong with the charts. I see that already. Um, GCZ23. This one's going to be just for the micros. So just MGCZ23. And there should be another chart in this chart book here. There it is. MGC. No. Um, did I change all of them now? E micro go. Oh, there it is. CLU23. Okay, good. So let's change this one to. Uh, let's change this one to, to GCV just for fun. And um, I also believe that this, uh, I'm going to confirm this now because I have something going on where I copy drawings from one chart book to another. So this is chart number four. So I'm going to look at now in this, in this chart book, I'm going to go into chart drawings. And you can see here under the setting, it says copy chart drawings from chart numbers. It's copying the drawings from chart number four to that chart. So that means that they should be the same symbol. So this one's got to be GCV now. GCV, my friends. And I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna copy to the clipboard. Apply that, okay. Now here I'll go over here, press F5. This one should be GCV. And um, no, this one should be GCZ. I made a mistake there. Let's just leave it the way it is. GCZ23 and it should be MGCZ23, there we go, okay. So now you can see I've set up a couple of DOMs here in Sierra chart, but you can see the price scales are all messed up, aren't they? Let's go ahead and fix that right now. Let's right click on the uh, price scale. I'm gonna go into the scale settings in Sierra, all right? I don't even know how many people are watching. Please leave a comment if you know, if you're here. Um, the scale increments are set to zero, which means automatic. I think there's a setting somewhere that I'm missing. I'm gonna take a look real quick. You can see, look at this price scale. We have 922.7, 922.7. I don't know why it's repeating the price like that. So I'm gonna do is F5, uh, auto set from data feed. Should be set to yes, real time. Okay, all that's fine. All this is fine. Um, I'm just not so sure why we have, I think I know why, that's why it was set to 0, 0.0 instead of actually zero so i'll set the horizontal i'll set that all to zero and that looks like we have fixed it um what it looks like it actually should be is 0 0.01 see now okay that fixed it so the way i do things in sierra for my for my the way i organize my dom is um each market has its own particular um scaling that I use and uh, for depending on the tick size. So for crude oil, I set it to 0 0.01 because that's the minimum tick increment of crude oil. And you can see my doms for crude oil look perfectly fine. And I need to change this because one of these contracts is expired now. I'm gonna fix that later too. Um, so in the case of gold, it looks like the minimum tick increment here is um, 0 0.1. So that's what I need to make sure to change it to. So 0 0.1, okay. And I'll do the same on all of them. 0.1 baby all right so here's the gold micros over here on the right side of the screen here is the gold v contract and here is the I'm sorry this is the gold v contract that i guess is expired because it doesn't look like there's any bids and offers but i still put it in there anyways just to see what it uh, looks like so now i'm gonna go ahead and save this i'm gonna go to file save as and i'm gonna name it as um i don't know what am i gonna name it here what, what do i name my other chart books as um I guess it's going to be GC underscore trader 946 dot chart book. No, dot chart. Dot dot chart. <laughs> Save. All right. Cool. All right. Let's see here. Mohammed's got a question. Let's see what he's talking about. Mohammed says, hello. I have, I added in the hello, by the way. <laughs> he says, I have a little very basic question. It better be, it better be basic. It better be little. Since you said that, why would I go to Sierra or any other platform, which charges for market data? I can use example, think or swim, and the data is free. 
That's a great question, my friend. That's a great question. That's a fantastic question. Thank you for your question. Um, so there is a big difference, I think, between the data you would get on a platform that is known for providing good data or they serve specifically as a data provider compared to like a brokerage platform, like your, your, your big broker, like Thinkorswim or interactive brokers where, you know, they provide a lot of different services, which means that they're going to probably have to cut corners on a couple of things. Data is one of them. So it's kind of a complex thing because with market data, there's different ways to serve the data. So the data comes from one central location, which is normally it's the exchange for where the trades are, are getting transacted, where they're, where they're trading. So let's take this market as an example, gold. Go back to the left screen. Actually, we'll, go, we'll, stay, we'll stay right here. It doesn't matter, okay? I'm here. I'm looking at gold. This is the price of gold right now, 923 even. And this data is coming from the COMEX exchange. Um, now, back in the day, there used to be an actual place where they would go to trade them called the floor, but now it's all electronic and some kind of a virtual reality. Um, but it's still called COMEX exchange, right? And it's located, basically this data is being, it's coming from a data center. So the exchange itself, the CME, which owns, the CME group, which owns these all these other exchanges, they're located in a data center which is where they, which is where everything is plugged in, right? I can't give you all the specifics. Everything's plugged in into their data center. And I think it's located in Aurora, Chicago. Okay. So you understand that? Maybe I should draw it out. Again, I'm getting my laptop in two weeks, guys. I had to send it back because it was broken, unfortunately. But if I had that fancy laptop, I was going to start drawing things on the screen for you guys and doing all this fancy stuff. So what I'm explaining to Mohammed is how different um, data how data is different from platform to platform. So basically what you have to understand is that a lot of, I'll just make a simple short answer. The, the bigger the broker, the more they have to cut corners and the data feed that you have on Thinkorswim, I don't know, I never use Thinkorswim. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use interactive brokers, right? Cause I use interactive brokers. The data you get from interactive brokers, they get it from a third party data provider called GFIS. Now, the thing you have to understand about this data feed, while they do get the data from the exchange, the way they get it and the way that they serve it to customers is not going to be the same exact way that other data providers will serve that data to customers. So some, co uh, some companies, Sierra Chart is one of them, IQ Feed is another one, they, they provide what's called tick by tick data, which it's supposed to be, on paper, this is what they say it is, it's supposed to be the raw data, each trade one after the next um, coming to your to you as a data feed through a web socket or through whatever method they use. OK, um, so basically the big difference is that you're getting um, you're getting a tick by tick data feed. You're seeing each and every trade as it was recorded on the exchange um, and it is provided to you with the uh, exact reporting of if, if it took place on the bid or on the ask. Um, and there's other, also other specific analytics that some exchanges provide, like um, st information about the order book, uh, like it's called market by order data, and I'll get to that in a second here if you want to know about it. Um, but one thing that's really important for some traders is the thing called tick by tick data where each trade is reported as it was reported on the exchange. And then there's this thing that the exchange does when the exchange receives a, a, large, a large trader, a large trade, um, they have this algorithm in place that can break up their trade into multiple trades and they, they allow the data providers access to that, I guess that particular algorithm or that or certain IDs associated with that particular order from the large trader. And what they can do is they can reconstruct those trades, like from one big trader, let's say he bought a thousand contracts, but on the tape, you didn't see a thousand, you saw it broken up. Um, some of these data providers, they can reconstruct the tape back into what would have been the original size of his order, right? So certain things like that, you're not going to probably find them with certain data feeds. Um, especially with like big brokers, like Thinkorswim, um, 
interactive brokers, all that. They're giving you like a very basic data feed. They're giving you a top of book, a what's the last traded price of the market. And for most people, that's gonna be absolutely fine. For most most types of trading, that's gonna be absolutely perfectly fine. But um, if you're trying to go more in depth and look exactly at what's going on right now, see how many sold in the bid, how many bought in the offer, how many orders are making up the current bid, you know, how many separate orders and all that, that's called market by order data. If you're trying to get that specific with the data, then you're gonna need something more advanced like IQ feed or Sierra chart, all right? You understand, did that answer your question? If it didn't answer, let me know. Um, you know, it's kind of complica complicated, right? It's not something simple. Um, so let's get back to building this. Let's get back to building this. I don't like this music, it's bad. <laughs> okay, so this this gold contract clearly expired. So um, I'm just gonna leave it there for now. So I'll make sure I'm save this. So we have GC Trader 946 on the other screen. We have whoops, wrong screen. Uh, on the other screen here, we have GC again, GC Trader 946. Actually, I think I should rename this to GC underscore charts. So I'm gonna save this as um, GC underscore charts dot chart. All right. Okay. All right. So we did analysis on goal. We built, we just built two Sierra chart books, guys. I mean, we're rolling over here, guys. I mean, for real, we're just, we're just rolling through this pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually I wanted to make another chart book and I want to talk about something interesting. So um, over the weekend here, I was at a get together and um, it was a friend of mine's place and uh, his girlfriend and all that. And uh, these girls, you know, <laughs> It's going to be kind of funny, but most of you guys are dudes, right? So you're going to laugh at this. But I think we're in what's called the boss babe generation where lots of chicks, they they make a lot of money doing certain doing jobs. The chicks are hustlers these days, right? So I was talking with my, with my friend's girlfriend and her cousin and all that, this place that I was. And um, they were telling me how they're into the Botox industry, into the, um, you know, I guess it's kind of some form of plastic surgery, they do injections and all that. And the girl's telling me her daughter runs a Botox uh, shop and she's been doing it for uh, two, three years and she's making good money and all this. So it, got, it, it made me think, it made me think. And I'm realizing, you know, with all this, um, I guess I could say whatever I want, no one really cares. I mean, you know, with this, we're, we're in a very crazy world, you know, and I think we're in a very, uh, in, right now, where the world is, we're, we're, we're in a very self-centered uh, mentality. A lot of people have like that self-centered mentality. Um, so things like, um, you know, beauty regeneration, um, superficial kind of beauty oriented things. I mean, a, a lot of chicks are into that. And I think that that's generally a very popular industry right now. So talking about like Botox and plastic surgery and all that. So it made me think like, well, I think it's time to consider looking into that industry when it comes to investing. Investing, um, And it just happens to coincide with a time where I decided to sell off some real estate positions that I had uh, long term. And um, it's, time to buy some, it's time to buy some Botox stocks or it's time to tra some trade some Botox stocks. You know what I'm saying, guys? Um, it's just a trade idea. It's not something I'm going to commit to. I'm not just going to start, you know, you guys know I'm not, I'm not that type of trader. I'm just, I'm not just going to buy a bunch of stocks and YOLO that shit. I'm a trader at the end of the day. Um, uh, so I'm going to trade it as it need be. So what I'm, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to give you guys a little wash list of a couple of Botox stocks that I did. I already did the research this morning. It's the first thing I did. It wasn't morning, by the way. I don't wake up in the morning <laughs> these days. Um, but I, I got a couple of them on the watch list. Let's let's tell you guys what those are real quick. And here's some of them. I got them right here. They're a big old list. And um, not all of them do only Botox, but some of these, um, at least these are the names that I came up with for now. One of these is a French stock that trades on the French stock exchange. So I'm not sure I'll be able to trade that one. Um, and I'm on the wrong screen, right? Yeah, I am. Here we go. Let's go to uh, right screen circle cam. Yeah. So this is an interactive brokers thing now. Okay. So these are the stocks right there. MRK being one of them, Merck and Co. Inc. And I saw this chart and I was like, whoa, this has been outperforming the general stock market for the last two years already. So that's in my mind before I went to research these stocks. I was picturing what I thought the charts were going to look like. And this was a pretty good representation of, of, of one of them, um, which is something that's generally been outperforming that people are not really looking at. It's not really being presented to you in the forefront um, of the news and all that. Everyone's always talking about trading the uh, stock market, trading these big tech stocks or whatever the heck they're talking about, but it's probably not what's gonna make you money. 
what's on the front page of the news is what's not is not what's going to make you money normally. Okay, you got to look inside the little creeks, inside the little crevices. What's going on over here? What's going on over there? Oh, I heard about that. Let's do some research there. Let's see what we can do. Uncover some secrets. Uncover some things that nobody's looking for. And that's, in my opinion, that's called being trying to position yourself ahead of the curve rather than, okay, let's go trade what's everyone's trading. Let's go trade this. Let's trade that. NVIDIA, AMD, always the same thing, you know. I'm sure there's opportunities in NVIDIA too. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm just, I'm just thinking. I'm just giving you guys a concept. You guys know what I'm talking about? All right. So what we're going to do is make a chart book in Sierra for some of these charts, for some of these stocks. You know what I'm saying? All right. Take a sip of water in the meantime. What's going on, Emil? Nothing is free. He's right. All right. So we're going to take advantage of uh, checking out Sierra's new stock data feed now. They should be providing delayed data. So what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do right now. Check this out. We're going to make it so epic. File, duplicate all charts to chart book in the most badass way possible. Now we're going to duplicate this chart book yet again. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to find the symbols for some of these Botox stocks. Some of them trade on the NICE. Let's just, let's just take a look at that real quick here. <laughs> I don't know where this music came from. <laughs> Copyright free music. How about this? Lo-fi music? All right, let's check this out. All right. Uh, excuse me. Um, okay, what I wanted to do was this. Double click there. New York Stock Exchange. How about this one? ABBV, New York Stock Exchange. This one trades on the French Exchange, so we won't have it. How about this? This one trades on the NASDAQ, Eurogen, Pharma, LTD. Interesting. RVNC, this one trades on the NASDAQ too. EO... EOLS trades on the NASDAQ. So we've got a couple of NASDAQ stocks here. AOEN, this one trades on the Amex, but I'm not sure if this one's even trading, but we'll have to see. I think this one's really a, a small cap. I mean, look at that chart. It's pretty ugly. So that one's on the bottom of the list. Um, and I did position these in the list according to their market cap and according to their ESG score. <laughs> How many of you guys know what that is? Oh my God. Crazy world we live in. If you guys know what an ESG score is, write in the comments right now right now please and this last one here super nuts pharmaceuticals trades on nasdaq okay so technically eon aon should be at the bottom and the rest should be okay um okay so what i'm gonna do now is go find these symbols in sierra if they have them they should have them so i'm gonna save this um i'm gonna save this chart book as <laughs> what can we save it as <laughs> give it a name give it a name uh I'm just going to name it Botox.charts. Because that's what I can think of. And now I'm going to go ahead and find a symbol. And I want to just look at the symbol format for these uh, stocks. Glad to see you talking about Sierra. Of course, dude. That's my shit, dude. Sierra is my OG shit, bro. Sierra is where it's all about, dude. I mean... I could talk about any other trading platform, but I'm always going to end up going back to Sierra. It's just how it works, bro. That's how the world works right now for me. So we got NASDAQ total view and we got US equities consolidated tape with depth. It was just kind of weird because there's like two symbols. Um, so I'm going to just try and open one of them. So I'll search by symbol and I'll just do... Um, Whoops, I, I think I made a mistake. So let's do MRK. Let's do search by symbol. Yes, environment, social governance, of course, yes. And uh, do you know who controls those? There's one company in particular that has a huge amount of influence when it comes to, to ESG scores.
Dr. Dravey. Glad to see you about talking about Sierra. Sierra is overrated. I don't think Sierra is overrated, sir. I don't think Sierra is overrated at all. I mean, I don't think Sierra is. <laughs> this is going to be kind of funny. I don't think Sierra is even rated, <laughs> meaning that not a lot of people talk about Sierra. I'm not getting the data from that thing. I don't know what's going on here. It's trying to connect to that DTC server, but it ain't working. Data feed disconnected. So what I'm gonna do is disconnect, reconnect, see what happens. You know which platforms I think are overrated? If you wanna talk about overrated platforms. <laughs> here we go, we're gonna start the roasting fest. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I get five people to, to say, Tell me which platform is overrated, then I'll tell you which ones I think are overrated. <laughs> but until then, I'm not spitting it out. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we st we're not succeeding in getting the symbols here, guys. We'll try again. We'll try again. Find symbol. Consolidate the tape. Let's do MRK. Search by symbol. Sierra, two instances in real time hours with total CPU hit 1.2% usage. Incredible. It absolutely is incredible, my friend. I totally agree with you. It's absolutely great. It's fantastic. It's just well engineered software, my friend. That's what I think. It's properly engineered software. It's well built software using C. Okay, let's do a simpler search AAPL. AAPL. Search by symbol. Data feed disconnected. I don't know what's going on with this, guys. We're not getting the symbol we want. Um, someone's got to tell me the friggin' extension for the for these for these stocks because we're not getting it. Let's see here. Am I really gonna have to go on the friggin' documentation to to get this? I guess I am. Let's go on the documentation and get it. Support board. US equities consolidated tape combined with NASDAQ total view. Coming on the documentation, my friends. We're going to read the documentation. This is what you guys got to do. When you got a problem, don't come and ask me in my comment section. I'm just kidding. You can ask as many questions as you want, guys. I'll answer. But when you got a problem, what you got to do is you got to search it up. You got to put up, you got to experience that blood, sweat, and tears. MBO, apparently. New symbol format is stock symbol underscore MBO. Okay. MBO then. NQTV, that's one of them as well. NQTV. And what was the other one? There's there's a different there's a couple of different uh US equities consolidated tape. I'm just reading about this to get the cor the correct symbol uh Ah, there it is. USCT. So let me write that down real quick. So one of them is NQTV, the other one is U S C T and the other one is M B O and that's a hyphen and on this one on the M B O one I think it was an underscore let's just let's just check that yeah it's an underscore so underscore I'm just Writing it down so I don't forget. Okay, let's go back to the other screen here, left screen. We're going to build some stocks chart books right now, guys. All right, check it out. Check it out right now. Let's try this one. Let's try this one right here. MRK underscore MBO. Change chart symbol. I don't know. What do you, what do you know? Looks like we got something. What do you know? I'm still getting this disconnected crap here. Stupid crap. Turn it off right now. Hack it right now.
I'm still getting this crap here disconnected two seconds ago. Screw that. Look at that. That's a glitch. Should I report the glitch? Yeah, it's certainly a glitch because uh, let's see if it continues going. And I'll get to your questions in a second here, guys. If this continues, I'm just going to end up restarting this instance of Sierra Trek. Yeah, it's still it's still happening. Okay, let's close this. As you can see, I have a beautiful desktop background. Anybody who knows what that icon is, let me know. You should probably know. SC2, let's restart it. Ah, frick, I gotta go frickin' block out the... Ninja Trader's overrated, according to Guy Man. <laughs> Definitely is, let's see. Um, correct, Guy Man. Debian, does Sierra only cover exchanges... What about Asia, Australia, uh, US exchanges? What about Asia, Australia? I think they cover some Asian markets. But no, actually, no. They When it comes to their own data feed, they don't cover it. They cover it using, um, I think with CQG, you can get the Asian markets. But I'm not so sure, actually. I'm not so sure. Just go look at their website to find out. Botox charts. Let's load them up. All right, cool. Ah, okay. We're still getting the message. Connecting to IP. Data feed disconnected. Okay, so there's clearly a glitch with this MBO symbol. And that's, it might be because I'm on the, maybe I'm not even on the right version. Maybe it's because it's too new. USCT, let's do that instead. I'm still getting this crap of uh, SCDTC delayed exchange data disconnected from the server will reconnect in two seconds. Okay, it doesn't matter. So now we're going to do a couple of things here. Check this out. We're going to build this chart book out. Changing the chart symbol on that chart to mrk.usct. I'm going to do the same for this footprint chart over here. This is a U.S. stock symbol. It's a pharmaceutical company. And um, on the bottom, I'm going to do a different stock. I'm going to do ABBV USCT. And I'm going to do the same here. Changing them all to the to the new symbols. Okay. Next thing I want to do is make it so when I change one of these chart symbols, it links them all together like a chart linking. So two at a time. Basically, I have two charts in this chart book. Uh, two symbols at a time, basically. So one symbol at the top, one symbol at the bottom. Six charts in total. Don't need something more complex than that. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm going to make them all in the same link group. So chart settings, just to show you where this is, if, in case. Um, and I believe it is in linking. There it is. So link number one should be fine. And we do not want to link the bar period. We only want to link the symbol. Scroll position doesn't matter. Days to load doesn't matter. Bar spacing doesn't matter. Only one. Okay. So only link the symbol. That's all we want to link. Same with this one. Link group number one. We only want to link the symbol. Nothing else. Okay. And finally, the last one. Which I'll do over here. Link number one, symbol, yes. Let's just make sure I have it on all of them. 
And yes, okay, so now at the second chart at the bottom, let's do it again. This one's gonna be link number two. So link group number two symbol. I know this is a tedious process, but this is what it takes to build chart books in Sierra. So for anyone that just got here, I'm in the process of setting up these charts to link um, based on the symbol. So when I change the symbol on one chart, it's gonna apply it to the other two charts that are next to it. So I'm setting up link groups. Okay, I'm almost done here. Link number two, symbol yes. All right, good. Now just to be sure, if there's any charts hiding in your chart book, you can go to window, windows and chart books, and then you should see all your charts. In this case, there's only six charts in this chart book, so there's none of them that are hiding, which is good. Okay, next thing I wanted to do was set up an associated watch list. Um, so what we're gonna do here is go up to this uh, control bar and you can see here, there's already an associated watch list there. Um, the way you get that in there, I believe is in, well, you have to add it into the control bar. So you go to customize control bar and then you have to find, uh, where is it? What is it called? Find symbol or watch list. It's called watch list. And I'm not sure what that would be under. You'd have to look for it. It might be under special items. No, it's not under special items, but it might be under one of these things. Anyways, it's called watch list. So now that I have that there, I'm going to edit the watch list and I'm going to add in all these symbols, these stock symbols here that I have. So just let's check it out. Let's see here. So let's remove these and I'm going to add them in one at a time. So we'll do MRK USCT add. ABBV USCT. Those are the first two that we got. Uh, the other ones are NASDAQ stocks. So we're going to do, uh, we got a little house beat going on over here. That's pretty good. Next one's going to be URGN USCT. Next one's going to be RVNC USCT. We got two more here, SUPN, USCT, as well as EOLS.USCT, good. So now we have these uh, watch lists, I mean these symbols over here, and now I can uh, cycle through them. Let's see if it works. Okay, and I, sh I should have a hotkey set up that can cycle through all of them, um, but it might have to download the data, so I'm just gonna do, there it is, I pressed my hotkey to go to the next one. That way we can cycle through our symbols in our short little watch list of uh, six, seven symbols. And I'm currently just downloading the data. In the meantime, I will answer some questions. What's going on, guys? What did you use before Sierra and Interactive Brokers? Um, the first broker I ever used to trade stocks was Quest Trade. They're a broker here in Canada. Um, at least I'm pretty sure they were. As well as I also used TD Direct Investing. Um, yeah, those are two brokers I used. Um, I, and I went from uh, Quest Trade over to Interactive Brokers after that, yeah. So it looks like we're doing pretty good here. I kind of like this. I don't know about you guys. Uh, the time frame on this chart is incorrect. This should be one day. That's correct. Okay. So let's do some analysis on some of these stocks, guys. We're looking at stocks that um, that do business in the Botox markets, my friends, because that's what we're looking at. We're looking for the Botox markets to be hot. Um, let's see here. I think I missed a couple of them. What was the company that evaluates most of the ESG points? That's that company. Uh, WRJS is uh, BlackRock. It is BlackRock, my friend. They basically control ESG scores. Uh, your voice sounds exactly like the voiceover on the Sierra Charts YouTube channel. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, 
You saw the Debian logo. I use uh, Sierra Chart on Fedora 38 through Wine for the past few months. Hey, that's cool, man. I heard there was some issues with Wine and Sierra because because Sierra stuff is built on networking, right? So, you know, when you're doing networking, it's, especially for trading data, it needs to be low latency. So when you're doing, when you have Wine involved, Wine's going to introduce some overhead. I mean, if you say the performance has been good, that's good to know. He says it works very well, which is very good, very interesting to know. Um, but I still think there would be a little bit of overhead there. It means that would, would be... Um, Higher latency. Anyone know good forums or social places for future traders to talk and share ideas, Paul? Um, I don't personally. I mean, look, the only uh, trading lounge I know is Fat Cat's Discord room, which is pretty cool. Um, it's changed, though. Uh, I noticed it changed when he announced that he was going to offer his... Um, member prep memberships it changed the dynamic of the discord which is interesting i thought that was interesting um i have a telegram you can join and talk uh you know let me find the link for you guys here it is it's basically t.me slash virilo trading you know you can join ha 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 and actually sorry that's not the right one but through that, what you do is this. You go to the pinned, the pinned thing right here where it says everyone is welcome to join the group. And you go to, you click there, t.me slash virilo trading underscore chat. Oh, looks like it's out of order. <laughs> Good thing I fucking checked. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that's not correct. So what it is is this then. It's going to be this. Watch. It's going to be virtual trading underscore group. Aha, you see? No wonder no one was freaking joining the group. Freaking screwed it up. I mean, I changed the name of the thing. Let's go. Should be this. Now, hey, it works. Click. Oh, look, now we join the group. Let's view that group. Right on. All right, cool. We're good, guys. Okay. So yeah, join the Telegram. Um, are you taking requests for stock charts? I mean, I could, but not really. You could, you could send one if you want. Fundamentals and research, okay. Do you use any other, do you use other stock analysis tools besides charting? For example, some financial statements or modules. You know, I'm getting into it, uh, Emil. Um, so today when I was doing research, on some of these stocks. So I, I did some of the fundamental research on them. Now I'm doing the charting right now. But what I used is, um, is this. So I would go over here and I had opened up these things, uh, what's called the uh, Fundamental Explorer. It's a window they have in TWS, which is pretty interesting. It's pretty good, I would say. Um, and I guess what I should do is Bring that over there. And um, yeah, so this is interesting. They show quite a bit of data that's important about the uh, the company regarding, you know, the the ESG score, which is actually quite interesting. I mean, it's important. I think the ESG scores are important, but, you know, it gives a, a general outline about what the company is, what they do. And, you know, you can get all your financials and the um, income statements and all that if you want for the last uh, last time they reported them, which is good. Um, I'm still learning how to read some of these things and I'd appreciate it if you guys, you know, pointed me in some resources that can give me help with reading some of these, uh, balance sheets. I'm trying to get better at it. Um, just the basics, like I understand the basics of it, right? So like when I look at like, for example, if we look at balance sheet, you can see here cash and equivalents. That means how much cash they have. I, I know that, right? See, that's good. I know I know one thing. I know cash. I know about cash. Um, and in millions of USD. So that means that when they have a K next to it, it means it's in, in thousands. So it means they have 5,000, 5.6 thousand million, which would be, does that mean 5 billion? Someone write it in the comments because, yeah. 
And I think it does actually, because I remember seeing, there was another stock here. If I go over to this one, which is a real estate stock that I was long for quite a while. I actually made a bit of money trading this one in the last couple of years. Um, if we go over to their, uh, where is it? Where was it? Financials, balance sheet. There you go. Uh, annual. So you can see here, December 31st, 2020, they had $780 million because they were looking to make some acquisitions. And I think that they did make some acquisitions because their cash balance was going considerably lower after that. And you can see now um, their last report, they only have about a hundred million left. You can see their cash was pretty much, is a lot lower than it was uh, around COVID, which is interesting. Um, so that means that if, if it says 700, there it means 700 million. That mean, and then it means if it says 1K, that would mean a thousand million. So that would mean a billion. So that means that this company here, MRK, has 500 billion, sorry, has 5 billion in cash on their balance sheet of their last uh, report here on August 17, 23. And apparently that's a 41% year to year change to the downside. I mean, they used to have a lot more cash. See that? They used to have 11 billion, 12 billion. This is a huge freaking corporation we're talking about here. So this company right here is, um, I don't think that they're the, if we look at their uh, profile, they don't do just uh, Botox. They do, they're a global healthcare company. The company offers health solutions through its prescription medicines, through biological therapies, vaccines, and animal health products. Yeah, so they don't focus on Botox mostly, but I think they're in the same sort of category. Um, therapeutic and preventative agents generally sold by prescription for the treatment of human disorders. Okay. They have a very high ESG score. So, and then you look at this one, ABBV. This one I think is the biggest out of all the Botox ones they got. They also have a high ESG score. So if you look at this one, the company's engaged in the research and development of manufacturing, commercialization, and sale of medicines and therapies. Um, various therapeutic categories, including Im immunology, which includes Humira, Sky, I don't know what any of these things are. Aesthetics products that include Botox, cosmetic. There we go. That's what I was... That's what I was looking for, basically. Um, they have a market cap of 265 billion, which is absolutely freaking not even normal. Um, balance sheet, they have 8 billion in cash on their balance sheet, which is absolutely insane. Um, and again, I don't know how to read balance sheets, so someone teach me. Teach me how to read balance sheets, guys. Okay, I gotta turn that thing off because it's freaking annoying. Disable visible meshes, message logging. Okay, all right. Is it possible to have a correlation chart like SPY slash TLT? I don't know what you mean, Amir. Um, you mean like like a correlation of one market to the other? Yes, but you'd have to be more specific. Like, do you, how do you want to display it? It is possible. 10K annual reports, assets, liabilities, equity. So is that the basics, Captain? Pharma bro got out and now goes through various metrics, including balance sheets of pharma companies. Learned a lot there. If you have the patience to sit through the rest of his BS. Pharma bro got out and now goes through various metrics, including balance sheets of pharma companies. So is that the guy's name? Pharma bro? Pharma bro? I don't know. I just want to learn how to read balance sheets a little bit. That's it. Do you know how they calculate the overall score for ESG values? It looks like it's not an average of three variables. Dude, I have no clue how they calculate ESG scores. I think they just, I think it's a matter of favoritism. I'll be honest with you. Based on a couple of the videos I've seen, it seems like they choose based on the industries of, of the companies and like the, um, maybe this is a bit extreme to say, but I also think that the political alignment of these companies affects how they get that ESG score as well. I saw a video by Patrick Bed David talk about it and it was pretty interesting uh, where he talked about how the ESG score is basically a monopoly by like those three big uh, corporations, BlackRock, Vanguard, and the other one. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a psyop, but I think it's still interesting because I don't know how to explain it. 
It's just interesting. Ask chat GPT with Excels. Martin Shkreli, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna write his name down too. Always something new to learn, guys. I think I've seen his channel before. Yep. Yeah. I need water, guys. I'll be back in one sec, okay? Stick around. Press that like if you've been here watching for a while, too. All righty. All right, we're going to do a bit of analysis on some of these stocks. I'm going to look at the weekly time frame to start off. Some of these are positioned in interesting locations. And um, let's check it out. Yep, okay. So let's start with this one, ABBV here, weekly time frame. Let's throw a couple of levels up here. I think these are... Um, I think this is all time high. Pretty sure it is. That's all time high right there. So I'll mark in the actual price of the all time high because it's psychological, right? Uh, wait. Um, uh, I'll write on this one. ATH. Um, am I missing a study on this chart? Let me see something. Proper line labels and date time. That's a study I have. Is it is it working? It's there. I don't like this music. It's bad. All right. By the way, guys, if you have any questions about anything I'm doing or anything you want to know or any video I've ever done, you have a question, throw it in the comments. Don't be shy. At all. And maybe I'll do more of these streams. Maybe. I've been working on videos a lot. Sort of. I'm going to throw up a couple of these levels. That would be one. It's quite important. Here's another. Um, other than that, these this is all messy here. This is nothing that interesting right here. Um, this is interesting here, sort of, but not really because this is now new information. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it down here. It's going to be here, here, right there. That's the level right there, 124.89. And we can go lower if you want down to these areas. Um, be interesting. You know, if you if you plan to run some sort of a dollar cost average strategy or some sort of a, a martingale or whatever, like I don't, like I accept doing martingales on bigger picture ideas. Like if you're looking to hold the stock for 
if you if you have like a, a one year or two year outlook on a stock then i wouldn't mind doing that type of thing like if you're if you have multiple weekly levels where you're willing to add and add and add that's okay but you have to obviously have a plan a bankroll plan for that too um I, you know, like I'll only do that if I think all the other factors in the trade are still relevant. Like if I think the sentiment's right, the context is right, I'm still interested in buying the stock or whatever, or whatever market it is, then I'll martingale in if I need to. Um, but the reason why I chose to, to cash out on some real estate positions is because the sentiment changed in the last two years. I don't really think, I mean, we may still see some upside there, but I think that I don't know. I mean, I honestly think ever since I got into crypto, it changed my mind a little bit on a lot of this stuff because crypto is like this new way to to invest. And like, you know, since you had that, you know, there's been multiple, multiple consolidation periods, multiple crashes in crypto. But I think that crypto itself is very interesting and there's lots of opportunity there for trading. There's inefficiencies that exist in the crypto market that used to exist in other markets that are now that have now been captured by, you know, the rise of high frequency trading and obviously the uh, continued regulation of markets. Um, so that makes the crypto markets interesting for traders. You know, if you're if you're a strategic entity, crypto is interesting. Um, and I think that as crypto gets more interesting, I think that more eyes are on crypto, less eyes are on traditional forms of investing, you know, like buying real estate trusts, or, you know, buying stocks or whatever, whatever they buy for fixed income, that kind of stuff. It's not the same as it once was, is basically, that's what the argument that I'm trying to make. So as I'm witnessing all this in real time, like the changing of the landscape of the of how markets are, you know, with crypto, with tech stocks, with futures, with all this stuff put together, you know, I'm thinking I want to be putting my money in the, in the smartest locations where, where eyes are, where other people's eyes are as well, not in places where nobody's looking, nobody cares, you know, and it's just like dead money sitting there. I don't want to put my money in place where there's dead money sitting there. Anyhow. So that's all I got for this ABBV. I mean, the weekly chart. Let's go to the daily chart real quick. Yeah, I see something here. Also see something here. And here. And if you really want to be nitpicky here. And those would be your daily levels. And that's about it for that one. On the upside, you have one here, you have one here, you have one up there, which is lining up with that one. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go over to, well, just fun. Let's look at a 15 minute time. I want to see what kind of volume this thing did today nothing basically this thing did basically nothing so these are not stocks that are like in play for day trading these are stocks that are in play for a lot bigger picture idea type of thing which broker to use to trade crypto in canada i use kucoin <laughs> which might some of you might find that funny but um it's an exchange it's a crypto exchange i i've used binance and i used kucoin those are the two that i used binance is um they made an announcement that they're leaving Canada. Could it be? I don't know why I can't. Uh... Watch list mode. Hmm. I guess I screwed that one up. Say watch list. Okay, I guess we're gonna have to do the watch list a second time. I don't know how watch list. I'm not a watch list expert in Sierra, I guess. Uh, so let's uh, let's do it again here. Remove. Let's add them in. MRK. USCT. MRK. 
um, ABVV, USCT. I mean, do, are there any good brokers, MO, Mulfar? Are there other brokers I should know about? Because I don't know of any, to be honest with you. URGN, USCT, RV, and C. E O L S U S C T. Okay. Let's load those in. Look at this one. That's interesting. I'm going to look at that one in a sec here. R V N C. That one was interesting. Okay, let's look at R V N C. Check this one out. This is interesting. Look at the way it's dumping like that. Um, I guess that one would be underperforming. Let me look at the. Uh, This one's underperforming. You can even see it has a bad ASG score. <laughs> Still interesting though. Weekly chart. Eh. If it reclaims this, that would be interesting. If it start reclaiming that $20 area, that could be interesting. Other than that, not that interesting. This one's interesting. URGN. This one is pretty interesting because you look, you look at this big pump you got. Now we have multiple weeks of trading ranges like this. I like that. That's interesting. We have nice volatility here. Just going to make a quick change of that music. This freaking weird trap music we got. Um, is uh, James, what's up, man? He says, is there a way to dock positions, orders, account balance into the Sierra chart window? Annoying having it on a separate screen. To dock positions, orders, and account balance into the Sierra chart window. Um, you mean like the... Um, you mean like the trade account monitor, the trade orders window? Are you referring to those those windows? The only, those can't be docked. No, they're separate windows, but what can be docked is the trade window itself. So say you're trading this and you wanna see your position you do open trade window for chart or attach trade window to chart. You see? Now you have the trade window there. And it can show your open PL and what your position is for the market. It'll show you your account here, but luckily I'm hiding it. At least I did one thing right this stream. <laughs> and uh, that's one thing you can attach. Um, you can't attach the um, trade orders window, that's a separate window. And normally you use this just to see open orders in your account. Yeah, the um, the trade window is pretty good. Um, though Sierra is working on certain things now. Um, like if you go to for your trade. Um, so basically they're working on putting all the functionality of the trade window into control bars. So that way you could, uh, basically it's going to allow the user to customize their own trade window using a control bar, um, which would be pretty good. So if I close the trade window and then say I add a control bar, like uh, control bar is one, okay? Then I'll customize it. And if you go to the very bottom, when you go to customize control bar, there's a thing called special items. And here you can see there's a trade account list, position data text, position open profit loss, daily net profit loss. So you can actually include those right into a control bar. So that might that might be good too. You might want to try that one too. It'll show you your position data, your position open profit loss and daily net profit loss. Um, 
I don't see orders there. You you probably can't see orders, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you can code, you can probably write your own trade window and uh, replace the existing one. You know, it's not that, it wouldn't be that hard. I mean, it would be a, it would be a challenge. It would be a fun challenge. But I mean, now that Sierra is working on uh, control bars and all that, I think it's, you know, but I've thought of that. I thought that you could, because um, I did a couple, I did a thing, a couple of things with Windows Dialogs. I was learning how to make Windows Dialogs and Windows Forms and all that. Uh, I did a bit of work with that, just learning how it works, you know. So with that, I could, I could make my own trade window essentially if I really wanted to. Um, But, you know, as I got a little bit more into coding and stuff, I thought, you know, well, you know, now I'm getting into Linux and I'm getting into all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, well, Sierra is also trying to speed up their development into Linux, trying to port Sierra over to the Linux operating system. Um, so I'm thinking, well, you know, why would I waste my time learning or working on wind forms or coding stuff with wind forms, hard coding it into uh, wind forms, which is uh, basically it's Windows API using dialog boxes or using just a basic window and drawing into it why would i waste time doing that when i could when i should probably be finding a th um, a cross-platform library and really focusing on that so the one that i've been looking at lately is is fltk that's the cross-platform library i was looking at for gui it's a very basic gui yeah Yeah, I read that they want to rip out the specific Windows stuff and make it work on Linux natively. Going to be super excited to see that come to light. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it would be good. It would be good to, to have that. Linux is pretty cool. I'm uh, I'm getting into it <laughs> a bit more, you know. Well, I uh, I got a new laptop. Well, I didn't get it yet. I, actually, I got a new. <laughs> I should say I got a new laptop. I had to return the laptop because it was a lemon, but. Um, in the process of having it, I did a lot on it. I actually edited one video on it. It was that video I did about TradingView futures trading. <clears throat> and I got a couple of hard drives. I put a second hard drive in that thing and I installed Debian uh, on the second hard drive. And I just for fun, you know, and it was pretty cool. So I wanna get back into that. What's cool about Linux is I learned, well, on Debian, I was able to read the Windows file system because on, on one of the SSDs in the system, in the laptop, I had Windows installed. The other SSD was Debian. Um, so I was uh, basically from, the, from running Debian, I'm able to read the Windows file system, but not the other way around. Uh, from Windows to read a Linux file system, you have to use a, a program on, on Windows called Windows Subsystem for Linux. And then you have to like mount the drive or something. That's what I ended up doing uh, in order for Windows to read files on the Linux drive, which is kind of annoying. You know any other workarounds for that? I love creating bash scripts in Linux. If you like using the keyboard and it seems like you do, you'll be right at home in Linux. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, same here. I spent about three weeks learning Vim. It's a great program. So I'm pretty, I, I like to do that stuff too. I like to be quick with the with the shell commands and like get in and out of pro of, uh, of scripts and use Vim to, to move around. It's pretty, it's pretty convenient. All right, so we're doing some edits. I mean, we're doing some, we should be doing some edits, but instead we're, <laughs> we're sitting here live streaming for nobody, but it doesn't matter. Uh, my plan was to, to build those chart books. We already did that. And now we're doing some analysis on a couple of stocks. So weekly time frame on this one, URGN is interesting. Let's go over to the daily in a second here, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Here's something I'm missing, yeah, right there. And what about this? Two. 
Actually, it should be here and here. Yeah, there's lots of levels to market on this one, actually. Oops, made a mistake there. Here's a new. Here as well. Probably something in here I'm missing. I'll do that another time. Let's see. It's kind of messy, this whole area. Yeah, I guess you'd put one right there. Yeah. And one over here. This whole area is kind of messy with uh, too many levels. But that's how I do things. All right, one day. What specifically are you looking for on the charts at these levels? So basically it's um, first time. So basically it's um, multiple bars closing in the same direction. And then the first bar to test the higher the low of the bar against the direction that they were closing in. And that marks uh, historical supply demand. And um, these area, I've seen these areas work numerous, numerous, numerous times. And they just provide context. They provide context for position trading. They provide context for institutional investors. I've seen them work like over and over and over and over again, like to the point where that's what I use, you know. There, it's not like a, um, they're not perfect levels. Like you don't just like buy when it gets there or sell when it gets there. You could if you want. If you if you want to be that aggressive, you could. Depends on other context. Um, I just want to make sure I'm marking that correctly. Uh, let's see here. That. This is less relevant because it's more in the past. But these two are relevant. Um, we're, so we're in this $20 area here consolidating. We've... We've held the weekly level twice, and now we have the bulls come in and close above the high of the prior day after three red days in a row. So that tells me that this stock is leaning bullish. <clears throat> I think investors are leaning bullish in this particular stock here, URGN. Um, it's only been about a month since we had this big pump here. They held the weekly level to the tick, practically. Well, it's never going to be to the tick, but it's the general area. Um, what would negate that? It's kind of it's kind of tricky. So you have this twenty dollar area, psychological area. You also have twenty five dollars. There's another psychological area right there, which is interesting, and it, it does line up with a weekly level. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my eye on this stock uh, tomorrow and the next few weeks. I'm gonna see how to play this one. Um, but it's certainly interesting. Okay. So we already did a B B V. We did the one we just did was U R G N. This one is M R K. This one's like the big, big one. E O L S. This one's not as interesting as the others. The chart is also pretty ugly here, consolidating. If you look at this, just a big, long consolidation, you know. And it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter, which is interesting. So I'm going to keep my eye on that one, but it's uh, certainly interesting. This looks like the type of scenario that it does this, and then one day you get news, and then bang, all the way up or all the way down. And since it's a, um, a, what do you call it, a Botox company, I would bet more up than down. But you never know. Let's mark a couple weekly levels in there. Oops. Okay. What about this? Go to um, let's mark the all time, which should be right there, and then 
right here, I believe. Da, 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 da. And here. Yep, that looks good. All time highs up there. We don't care about that right now. On the support side. Seven bucks, seven thirty seven bucks and thirty cents or so. All right. Then we got this. Nine seventy. Kind of in the same area here. And this as well. All of these see when this is this is this this can happen. Now when this happens, it's a little messy. And this is when you have to zoom out. See, I was, when you're too zoomed in like that, and this kind of starts happening, this kind of uh, this is where it gets a little bit messy here. So remember, we're on a weekly time frame. When you have too many levels in the same area like that, it's like dissonance, right? It just means that there's a lot of dissonance in the market. The market's just going back and forth. So what that tells me is that these levels just become they just become a zone in fact like the more the more important one is the more recent one which is this one 970 the others here are less important because they're historical um and it just becomes a zone at that point you know so i'll remove that middle one let's try to move the wrong one i'll move the middle one there we go and uh you know that's pretty much it for that stock i mean you should have a big consolidation i'm gonna keep my eye on that one SUPN. This was interesting because see it's trending up in general here um, on a multi year basis, that is. So 2020 here. And look at this March 2020, or when was COVID? It was here, March 2020. Notice how this stock did not crash. <laughs> I mean, it went, it went down, right? But it didn't. It did not do what the Nasdaq did. It did not do what uh, some of these other real estate stocks did. They freaking tumbled those ones. Look at this. It's freaking barely went down. It's insane. And you see this is the trading range we've been in here for about two, three years. SUPN. I'm just going to look again at the fundamental chart for that particular one. SUPN. Probably low ESG score. Yeah. Um Analysts are pumping it to 45 bucks. It's currently at 30 bucks. They don't have a lot of cash. They're 1.2, 1.3 billion in the total. But um, anyways, I, like I said, I don't know how to read balance sheets, but just interesting still to look at. I gotta go watch some of the videos you guys are sending me earlier. All right. Okay. Well, I guess no one wants to make some money because uh, <laughs> no one seems to care about both dog stocks. That means that I'm going to make some money and you guys are not. <laughs> it's very simple. Um, look where, look where nobody else is looking. And um, when everybody's looking, you are going to be selling, my friends. I will be selling when you guys start looking. When it's in the news, basically. That's how it works. When something's in the news, you get the hell out. Um, unless you're trading it, that's different. That's pretty clean, actually. A couple levels I missed there. That's one of them. And also right here. Yep. That's all pretty clean right there. $29 down to $27 down to $25. All this is a buy area for me. I mean, we've already held 29. But if it if it sells off below 29, you might see a sell off. You might you might see a puke down there. In which case, you can buy it as low as 25 bucks. That would be the play on this. 20 even, that's a different thing. From 25 to 20 is a different game. Something else. Daily chart. Consolidating, mostly nothing going on here. Trying to close above the high. What do we do? Where did we test? Down here. And we 
tested down here. So we tested the daily level, rallied off of it. Tested a daily and a weekly list. So this is this is an example of a long that I would have played um, where we have a weekly level and a daily level coming through like that and selling off into the area pretty rapidly. You know, I would have been looking for longs uh, in that general location. So that's interesting. Um, so let's say I would have already been long this stock. How would I be trading it afterwards? That would be the question to ask, you know. A couple of daily levels I'm marking in there up to 35. Remember, the analysts are pumping it up to 45. So that means you want to be selling before that. You're always going to be getting in front of those idiots because that's what they want to do. They want to pump the stock up. Or do you want to get more liquidity in the stock so they can sell? It's all a game. And that's it. Looks like we're pretty good with that, guys. This RVNC, I'm not going to touch it. It's pretty ugly. One week. I'm not going to touch this unless it reclaims 20 bucks. Put a big fat alert on this. Last. Alert four. Alert ones per bar, go. There you go. Reclaim 20 bucks and uh, we got that. Okay, cool. All right, guys, I did all the work that I had to do. I built my gold chart book. I built my stocks uh, Botox chart, chart book. I got to do some work on this crude oil chart book now. I'll do that off camera. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. This stream might not be public because I exposed some public info earlier. So uh, see you guys later.